Hello and welcome. In today's episode of Dr. Nora, I take you through my tried and tested healthier version of carrot cake. Yes, that is right. There is a such thing as having a healthier cake and I'm about to prove that to you very shortly. So sit back, relax and enjoy cooking with Dr. Nora. Just picture the moment you're sitting there having a nice cup of tea or coffee and what goes well with coffee? Well, a lovely piece of cake. But what is inside that cake? Well, typically in your typical cafeteria, your cake will be laden of hydrogenated fats. There'll be lots of oil, there'll be lots of sugar. It will be so calorific and unhealthy that you think to yourself, well, this little treat has got a little bit out of hand. But what if there's a way to make that treat a little bit healthier, less calories, less oil, less sugar? Oh my goodness, what can we possibly do? Well, stay tuned because I'm about to share with you my favorite all-time recipe of this wonderful version of carrot cake. For this, you will need three eggs, and I'm choosing organic eggs. You'll need a cup of plain flour or any alternative. I'm using a gluten-free alternative for now because um, I don't like gluten too much. You will need a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of cinnamon, my favorite spice of all time. You'll need a handful of walnuts. You'll need some pineapples. Now this will become very clear as to why I'm using pineapples very shortly. And we're also gonna be using a sprig of maple syrup, and this is sugar-free maple syrup, so it has got less calories. But all importantly, we are not forgetting that you also need three carrots, which will be grated, like I grated myself over here, a handful of walnuts, as we said, and some dates. I'm using dates, you can use raisins if you wish. And we'll also need a few gratings of ginger. Mmm, lovely, lovely ingredients. Now I'm just gonna take you through some health benefits of these ingredients. So first up, ginger. Ginger is a fantastic herb that is, or root even, that is great for those times when it's a bit cold, it warms you up. It also helps your immune system as well, so it helps to improve your immunity. And check out my immune boosting video in the description below of how this can help you boost your immune system. Dates, they are packed with natural sugars, they're packed with other vitamins and minerals such as potassium, magnesium, natural glucose as well, and they taste absolutely gorgeous and of course walnuts are packed to the brim with more nutrients such as vitamin e which is great for your skin your nails and it's also fantastic for your immune system as well and not to mention the trusty old carrots carrots are packed with beta carotene and vitamin a which is fantastic for your eyesight and also your skin as well so on my table i have a lot of nutritious foods and how is it that we're going to turn these ingredients like you could find in your pantry or in your fridge into something that is going to be quite magnificent. Well, first up, we're gonna to need to get our carrots ready. And for this, I am going to peel my carrots and grate them. Now, for those of you who have never grated anything before in your life, I trust me, it is very simple. Make sure you get your peeler and you either peel away from yourself or peel towards you, but really be careful that you don't cut yourself when you're doing this. And of course, it's something that is only suitable for adults. There we go. And voila, my carrot is now peeled. You can use these um, cuttings for compost if you are composting something or if you're growing some vegetables, these are great on a compost pile. Next up, you want to grate your carrots and I'm using uh, just a manual grater for this, but you can if you want to not have the workout you can use an electronic grater, but I personally find that if I'm gonna have a cake, I need to make up for the calories. Even though this is a lower calorie option, I still want to earn my carrot cake at the end. So a little bit of grating to help, help it really kind of thin out your carrots so it's not too lumpy in your texture of your cake. And it just really helps to release those gorgeous smells and that texture and the taste of the carrot. And there's even a little bit left for me. Mmm. Now that your carrot is nicely grated up, as you can see, like so, it is now time to prepare the rest of your ingredients. And for this, I'm using, as I said, some natural dates, which I'm going to cut in quarters, removing the pips, of course, because nobody wants to eat the seed of the date. So taking this out. And you can use sultanas if you don't like dates. I personally prefer dates because they have a bit more nutrition to them compared to your sultanas. And I'm just cutting them up into tiny little pieces so that when it does go into the cake, those small pieces are spread nice and evenly throughout the dough. And then second up, I'm gonna start just cutting my walnut pieces into smaller segments as well. 
because walnuts taste a lot nicer when they're smaller for some reason. Next up, I'm gonna have a little bit of freshly grated ginger. Now, freshly grated ginger to me is just gorgeous. It is so good for so many different ailments. It's great if you're feeling quite sick, if you might be suffering from morning sickness, for example, if you've got any aches or pains, it is great as an anti-inflammatory and it's great as a winter warmer as well. So a few grates of that and it will just help add a bit of punch to your carrot cake. You don't need too much because it is fairly strong and I can smell it already, it's quite fragrant. If you don't have any fresh ginger to hand, you can equally use some powdered ginger from your local supermarket and you just want to use about a half of a teaspoon. Now the trick with carrot cake is that you want to make sure that all of the dry ingredients are mixed together and all of the wet ingredients are mixed together independently of one another. And then when the time comes, it's time to mix them all up. So now that my wet-ish ingredients are ready, I'm gonna focus on my dry ingredients and I've got a little plate over here and I'm gonna pop those dry ingredients into my plate and then I'm gonna mix them up. So for this, I will need one cup of flour. Now, traditionally you would be using maybe two and a half cups of flour, but because I am calorie counting and I don't wanna to add too many unnecessary calories, so I'm gonna half that and just use just about one cup of flour because most of your calorie content will come with the flour. And trust me, it comes out gorgeous. You don't need necessarily too much flour. One cup is more than enough. And into the plate that goes. Next up, I'm going to need um, one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. Now this helps, to, helps the cake rise, so this is super important. Along with the baking powder, you want to get these two absolutely right. So we've got <laughs> one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda and two teaspoons of baking powder. One and two. Lovely. Now that those two are in, it's time to get your cinnamon ready. I love cinnamon, but you have to be careful you don't overdo it because it is quite an overbearing taste if you put too much of it in. So literally just stick to two teaspoons, although it can be very tempting to put in more then two. And again, cinnamon is such a nice winter warming herb or a spice, and it just really helps. You can even have cinnamon on your chai latte. You could have it just by itself with some water, and it just tastes exquisite. Next up, you want to just stir in your ingredients together. So you've got all of that baking powder, the bicarbonate soda, and the cinnamon and the flour all mixed in together, like so. Now, you will notice that I'm not using any additional sugar, and that is because some of the ingredients that we'll be supplementing with or substituting it with today will have their own natural sugars. And so we don't really want to be adding any unnecessary sugar to our cake mix. Okay, that looks pretty well stirred in, and you can see there that the cinnamon is nicely around all of the flour. It's really kind of mixed in beautifully. So I'm confident that everything is mixed in well. I'm gonna set this to one side. I'm going to grab my bowl and do the next few pieces. So this bowl is for the wet ingredients and then shortly after I'll be adding in my dry ingredients into the wet ingredients and stirring it very gently. So to start with I'm going to get my three eggs, pop them inside, one, two, three. Eggs are a fantastic source of vitamin D as well. So if you're somebody who doesn't get much sun, maybe because it's the winter time, these are a great way of getting some natural vitamin D into your diet. And now it's time to whisk your eggs so that they're nice and beaten. And really mix that in so it's nice and well beaten, ready for your rest of your ingredients. Now at this point, you will very typically see recipes that will introduce maybe a cup full of oil and perhaps a half a cup of sugar. But in my opinion, oil is just such a heavy calorific ingredient that will help to keep the cake nice and moist, but it does have a lot of effect on your arteries on the inside. And certainly if we have too much oil or too much fat in our diet, it can lead to atherosclerosis, which is basically where our arteries or our vessels inside of our body get clogged up with lots of fatty plaques. And eventually what can happen is those fatty plaques break off and they can lead to things like heart attacks and strokes. 
So I always advise my patients to cut down on the amount of oil that they're using in their diet. Um, if you are going to opt for an oil, opt for something like an olive oil, for example, uh, which is healthier than your man-made synthetic oil, such as canola oil. You can, if you want to, use oil, certainly you can, and you may want to opt for, say, half a cupful of olive oil for this particular ingredient. However, I'm going to be using an interesting ingredient, which is not oil, and it's a substitute for that, which will still give the cake its nice moist uh, appearance and also make it very light and fluffy. And so instead, I'm going to be substituting my oil with some pineapple chunks. That is right, pineapple. It will keep your cake nice and moist. It will allow it to have a nice rise to it as well, keep it nice and airy. And it will taste just as good, if not better, than your oil-laden, sugar-laden cake. So let's give this a try. So what I've got here is some pineapple chunks in juice. So I'm going to drain off that juice because I don't need that juice at the moment. And you could always use this juice later on if you want to have a pineapple drink later if you want, but I'm primarily more interested in the actual pineapple chunks themselves. And I'll show you how to prepare them very shortly. So we're just draining off the juice right now, as much as you can. Now I would recommend getting the pineapple chunks in juice rather than syrup because syrup just adds on a lot more sugar and really we're trying to eliminate as much sugar as we can. So pop those chunks into a plate separately like so. And then what you want to do is try and crush up your pineapple chunks as much as you can because you don't really want to take, oops, <laughs> you don't really want to taste the pineapple itself but you're using its properties um, to help substitute the oil factor and help the cake rise and give it that nice moist appearance, that nice moisture that you're after. So really crush them up nicely like so. And I'm just using a fork for this and a bit of elbow grease. So there is a lot of exercise going into the preparation of this cake, which kind of justifies having a nice slice at the end. You can sort of reward yourself with a good slice of carrot cake and a nice cup of tea right at the end. I never said this cake was going to be easy to make, <laughs> but it certainly is less calorific and healthier than your traditional carrot cake recipes that are out there. Perfect. So I'm happy that that is now crushed up adequately. As you can see there, it's turned into a bit of a mash, which is exactly what I wanted it to be. Now the pineapple itself will have some sweetness to it. However, to give you a bit of an extra boost, if you do have a bit of a sweet tooth and you find this will be a bit bitter, I personally do use a little bit of sugar-free maple syrup, which I'm only gonna use about a third of my cup full of this because I don't really want this to overpower the taste or the sweetness. This is a sugar-free option, which is um, sucralose based. And we're just gonna squirt a little bit into a cup. And really all I'm using is about, not even a third of the cup, but the smallest amount, as you can see in there. Perhaps about 50 mils in total. And I'm gonna place that inside of my beaten eggs. In you go. There we go. And I'm just gonna give that a nice little whisk. And now it's time to add all of the rest of my wet ingredients. So my pineapple are going in. In you go. Mmm, this looks delicious already. And now it's time for the rest of my fun ingredients, which are my grated carrots. Inside you go. And now it's really starting to look a bit like a carrot cake. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without my walnuts. Inside you go, and my lovely dates as well. I can smell the ginger, it's really coming out, it's gorgeous, I love that smell, it's fantastic. You can always cut back on the ginger if you want to. But now it's really important to mix up your ingredients together. So I've got a little spatula, and I'm just gonna mix up the carrots with the eggs, as well as the other ingredients as well. Make sure the consistency is nice and even, and everything is well spreaded through, because this will form the base of your cake itself. Oh, that is just looking absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. Perfect. 
So now you can see my pineapples are mixed in, my dates are mixed in, my walnuts are mixed in as well. The eggs is all nice and slippery. I've got a nice even consistency throughout. It's still a little bit on the moist side, which is exactly how I want it to be. I don't want this to be dry at this stage because when I add in the flour, it is gonna get a lot drier. So we need this to be nice and moist. Perfect. And now it is time to put in my flour mixture or my dry ingredients. Now for this part, it is so important that you don't overbeat the flour mixture in with your carrot mixture because the more you beat it through, the less air you're gonna have and the denser the cake is gonna taste. So word of warning, nice and gentle as you pass it through with the carrots. So in that goes as well. Lovely. And now you want to just gently mix it in with your carrot and egg mixture until you've reached a stage where it is nice and mixed in together and you've got no lumps of any dry flour. At first you might think, oh my goodness, it's not mixing, it's really dry, but persevere, gently just bringing around the spatula around, not beating it too heavy, not beating it too hard, really being careful with it. And it will eventually all mix in. There we go. Look at that, that is looking gorgeous already. And did I tell you that this carrot cake, it all comes in at just over a thousand calories for the whole cake. So if you divide this between five or six people, that's pretty good going for a slice of carrot cake. Look at that, that is absolutely gorgeous. There's just a few more pieces of flour that need mixing in, but we are almost there. Smells stunning. Great, there we have it. The mixture is all nice and mixed in. It is exactly the perfect kind of consistency I want. I don't want it to be too dry. If it's too dry, you put too much flour in and you might want to just add in an egg. But if it's too runny, it means that you probably haven't put in enough flour, so you might want to just add in a little bit more flour. But this is exactly the kind of texture that you want. It's not too runny and it's not too dry. Well done, guys. You've made it this far already. And now it is the fun part. It is time to get your baking tray and place it all in your baking tray and get your oven ready at 180 degrees on fan mode. And it's time to make your cake. How exciting. And in it goes. Oh, I love it. Mmm, looks amazing. I don't want to waste a single bit. <laughs> Okay, time to give it a little bit of a shake, just to make it nice and even, and then you can always just flatten it with your spatula, just to give it a nice flat shape on the top so it's equal throughout the whole of the cake. So you're not getting a really lumpy cake where half of it is thicker than the rest, otherwise it just won't cook very evenly. And there you have it. Look at that, that is just amazing. I love it. So it's time now to place this in the oven at 180 degrees. We'll need to cook it for around 40 minutes. However, I do recommend checking it at the 30 minute mark to check that it hasn't burnt. We don't want it to burn. And I'll show you exactly how to check it. But for now, Mr. Carrot Cake is going in the oven. Oh, it's such an aromatic, lovely smell. It's just filled up the whole house. It smells like carrots, ginger, cinnamon. I can smell it all coming through and it really just warms up your bones. What a beautiful smell. And so 40 minutes has passed. It's time to have a look inside the oven and do the knife test, which involves placing a nice clean knife through into the middle of your cake mixture and making sure when you take it out, it comes out nice and clean. So let's open up the oven and see how it goes. Oh, it smells gorgeous. Look at that stunning cake. Just take a look at that. Now it's time to pop in my knife and hope that it comes out nice and clean. Perfect, it looks really, really good. So now we can turn off the oven. 
Oh, I do love the smell of carrot cake. Freshly baked carrot cake, especially when it's homemade, has just got that extra gorgeous taste to it. It just smells so much nicer than shop-bought carrot cake or something that you don't even know what's inside it, all those preservatives, all that nastiness. So what I'm gonna do now is just put a tea towel on the top and the bottom and just transfer it. And voila, it has gone straight out and place it onto my plate, ready for serving. Alrighty, so after you've left your carrot cake to rest for a couple of minutes when it's cooled down, it is now time to do the exciting part, which is to see what it looks like from the inside. And hopefully it has risen nicely, it's not too dense, and all of your lovely carrots, your pineapple, your dates, your walnuts, your ginger, is just all evenly spread throughout. So let's open up together and take a look. I can instantly smell the ginger just oozing out of this lovely carrot cake. Let's take a look. Ah, oh, that looks phenomenal. Just take a look at that lovely rise. We've got a great sponginess. It is really spongy and I can feel it. It feels fantastic. It is a little bit warm at the moment, but I'm going to just cut this in half. And the most important part is the taste test. Alrighty, now that the cake has cooled down sufficiently, it is time to take a small piece and do the ultimate taste test. Does this taste better than the shop-bought carrot cake or is it even better? Let's find out. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Yeah, it's really good. It is so moist. The pineapple has actually really helped to keep its moisture. It tastes really succulent. It's very moist. It's very like spongy. It feels like a proper cake from a restaurant. <laughs> it's crazy to think that this does not have sugar or any added sugar at least. It doesn't have any oil, it doesn't have any butter. It is a healthier version of your typical carrot cake. And I urge you all today to try and substitute some of those horrible um, ingredients such as the oil, such as the added sugar for alternative options like we have done in the video today. And let me know if you will give this a try yourself or if you have any variations yourself. I would love to know in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy. Mmm. Mmm. I love the walnut. Oh my god. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm.